Welcome everybody once again to another video in the Asian Film Marathon and we're looking at another Japanese film and don't, don't mind this, this is just the new microphone and it is fantastic quality as you can already tell um, from the other videos that I've used it with um, but anyway, not to get off track here today's film is going to be one that came out in 1956 by a director called Colin Ichikawa and it is The Burmese Harp and this is uh, another edition in the Masters of Cinema series and what a fine addition it is because just just a beautiful film. Before I get into it, let's dive into the plot and the premise of the film. So it's set in the close of World War Two, and a Japanese army regiment in Burma, which I found out is you know in India um, after doing some googling, and uh, that regiment surrenders to the British army. And Private Mizushima, who is the main protagonist of the story, is sent on a task to persuade. Uh, Trap the Japanese battalion um, to surrender to ensure that there's no more bloodshed um, to their to, to their forces, and the outcome is a failure. Um, there's no spoiler, which causes Mizushima to, to disguise himself uh, in the robes of a Buddhist monk, thinking he'll have temporary anonymity, you know, so he can kind of escape for a while. Um, however, he quickly learns um, the power of his new role, which does consider him to think about his life and what he what hopes to achieve and what he's going to do next. Um, the first thing to say is this is really a beautiful film. It's harmonious, tranquil, tragic, poignant and very, very spiritual as well. Um, I have read about it being an adaptation of, the, of a novel, of a novel that is meant to introduce young children or something um, into ideas of Buddhism and the fundamentals of Buddhism and Really, this film does have a. I'm not an expert on Buddhism, but it's something that has caught my interest over recent months. And really, this film does kind of represent it very truly. Uh, there's a lot in there, obviously, about Buddhism because he becomes a Buddhist monk. So you've got that really big religious element, and you've also got those some of those shots to look up in the sky that really suggest there's religious themes into this film, which, you know, it'll take a while to sink in for me as well. Again, this is one of those ones that uh, is going to leave you to think for a while and that's what a good film should always do um, so yeah it's, it shows how spiritual Asian films can be you know in the eastern countries like Japan and, and India and you know and China and stuff and just really touching human universal kind of stories as well I mean obviously understanding more about the war and Buddhism itself would make it a more rich experience, but really it's so human and it's it's something I would say is very universal indeed. And I think people 15, 16, you know, any age really could watch this and enjoy it. Um, so it encompasses themes of humanity, peace, war, um, human tragedy and Buddhism and hope. And to me, it really is a testament to the human soul. And the first thing I'd like to talk about, one of them, not the first thing I've already talked about stuff. The use of music in the film, because obviously it's called the Burmese harp, and there's a reason for that, because uh, Mizushima plays a harp, um, and he usually plays songs for his regiment, and he's known for doing this, he learned how to play the harp, and he was given this in Burma. So he plays the Burmese harp, uh, which he taught himself to play, naturally gifted, and it really becomes a symbol of his expression, but also of peace itself, in a way. Because music is something that kind of unites everyone in the film as well. I'll get more into that, but music, like all other art forms, I read this also somewhere, so um, it's very true. You know, music is also art and form of expression, and so is film. And I think it's used very well in this to kind of represent the the character's feelings. Because when he's playing the harp, you get that real sense of longing and sadness and pain in the character especially how he's playing and everything and and again you know whenever he's playing in front of other people the emotion it does create a lot of emotion and as a symbol of peace it really is because there's a really great scene very very early on in the film um, it's no spoiler where the, me the men are staying in their bunker or whatever and they think they're about to be ambushed by British army or, or whoever uh, the enemy forces so to let on that they don't know that they're coming they start singing and you know they were already singing before that but they start singing together and eventually they discover that the British troops um, aren't there to kill anyone uh, because the war is over um, as it's being said 
and this British soldiers are also singing the same song but in English it seems and there was that it was just such a re really beautiful scene because it was almost like a how could you say just a, a utopia uh, just it's really positive energy because you've seen you've seen these two different sides you know the enemy the allies and the enemies coming together singing these songs uh, because war is over now the wartime has come to an end for them um, really there's there's such a, a strong humanity with it that resonates to me right now and you know the music really kind of united all the soldiers and everything and it was just it was just a really beautiful thing and music is one of the key themes to the film I would say there's so much there's a lot of music and a lot of him playing his harp and a lot of other people singing and it really unites everyone um, and that ties in again with the themes of the bro of you know brotherhood and you know brother in arms sort of theme as well which I'll get into later so yeah really themes of wartime tragedy and that's another big one and I couldn't help but see the similarity between this and the human condition really really similar because there's actually a character in this called Kobayashi which I thought was kind of interesting because you know the human condition by Kobayashi Masagi Kobayashi which came out in 1959 to 1961 it has quite similar themes in this um, you know kind of looking at the trauma and morality of war and also you know a kind of existential crisis you can come into if you're in a war and I thought that was really interesting in this film and it's very very peaceful as well the way it presents it all but you know you have Mizushima and his comrades who surrender you know they don't want any more death they don't want any more men to die need needlessly and so whenever he sent on his mission Miz Mizushima sent on his mission he discovers that this this other uh, battalion they all just want to fight to the death um, so that ties into the themes of Japanese honour it's raining, I hope that rain's not too loud. So, you know, you got those ideas of Japanese honour, which is sort of in Kobayashi's The Human Condition, and it looks at patriotism and wanting to die for your country. And, but also, you can see it's kind of foolish because, you know, really they should just try to survive. Um, you know, they almost turn against um, Mizushima. You know, they're almost going to kill him for backing down, calling him a coward and everything. And um, yeah, you, you get a real sense of that because people are calling uh, Kaji and the human condition a coward as well, uh, along with other characters. So I thought the Mizushima character was very universal. And what I really loved with, with the, the whole character and the relationship he had with the army, it's something I haven't, you don't see that often in war films. Um, obviously you see the whole brother in arms kind of thing and, you know, caring for each, caring for your comrades and fellow soldiers. But here it's a really powerful relationship because throughout the film the the regiment, the army regiment is constantly thinking about Mizushima, wanting to get back in touch with them. And we're talking about twenty men here. And there was something so it was almost like a family, the way they were talking about him, you know. I hope he comes back. They even teach a parrot later on in the film as well to so they can try and persuade him to come back because they discover he's a monk. They they, they train the parrot to say uh, Mizushima come, come back with us to Japan because you know obviously Mizushima is starting to think he's not going to go back to Japan and you know there's something really touching about it especially when I don't want to spoil it but there's a really touching scene at the end of the film and that's when we have the famous quote um, Burma's soil is in red and so are its rocks and you don't think it's a part of a quote until you, you actually see the film you, you see it come up at the end and it's just really beautiful and the really beautiful it's a really pure kind of human relationship and also brotherhood for you know the fact they've been in an army together and they've been through war together and there was just something so touching about it and you, you get that real sense of their relationship as well and moving on now to the visuals of the film it's stunning and really one word to describe it is beautiful um on bonus feature of this i watched uh the, his name is tony tony rains and he done a little feature ad on it and he said that some of the scenes were filmed in Burma and um, but mostly in Japan and obviously the scenes that were filmed in Burma was whenever you see some of the landmarks um, really beautiful landmarks as well and I love the big statues of Buddha as well and again that ties in with the themes of Buddhism Da, called the Burmese harp Da
And yeah, the use of locations and just the, at the general atmosphere, there's sometimes you get these cracking shots going through your trees and it's really nice. You can see even in the still here, it's really nice cinematography, definitely. Good mise-en-scene and cinematography. Um, and again, it gave, it gave you this really spiritual sense of the characters and how they were feeling and everything, which is what good cinematography should always do. Um, so yeah, absolutely recommend this film. And before I end, I will look at the actual release of this film in terms of its features. So the print quality, um, I can't judge it, I can't compare it to anything else in terms of you know, other prints of this, but it looks great, really nice. Um, yeah, it was just really, it was good quality. Um, what I really liked in it was the, the booklet, um, nice imagery in there, nice and inside imagery as well. But what I liked inside the disc actually was the interview with scholar and filmmaker Tony Raines, who talked a little bit about the film. I'll give you a little bit of a, you know, extra information on the film. There's also a trailer in there thrown in as well, um, the original Japanese trailer. So the booklet's pretty good and it has some lavish images, of course. Hope you can see that okay. Some really nice images in there. Uh, nice front cover on it as well. And you got a little essay there on the film's sort of philosophy and themes explored, which is always nice. I mean, I love the book with Master of Cinema Give You. I think it's really good, especially you know, whenever people are getting interested in film and they want to learn more about films. It's certainly a great plus. Um, overall, really great release, and now one of my favorite Japanese films. And Kani Chikawa, he's not an extremely well known filmmaker today, but this film won the award at the Venice Film Festival and it done quite well and it was quite popular at the time. And I'll have to check out more Chikawa films in the future, so I was really glad to watch this in the marathon. And go out there and watch this one, really recommend it. So, again, everybody, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and the review. If you've seen the film, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. If not, get out there and watch it. And until the next video everybody, see you then and take care.